All right, what's up? I'm Hunter Hornstein, that's Ryan Moore, and this is Behind the Seams, presented by Riptide's Oceanfront Grill and Rooftop Bar. All right, we're back for another episode, episode two of season two, the off-season season of Behind the Seams. I'm Hunter Hornstein. That is Ryan Moore, Pelicans president and general manager. And this is the show where we bring your questions directly to El Capitan, Captain R. Moore. We've got our drinks. We're at Riptides. We're on the second level today, a little bit different location. And I kind of like the vibe right now, Ryan. Kinda, I do, too. I kind of like it. Are we inside or outside? Can't, it, we're kind of both. We're in this back section of Riptides. There's three levels here. Is Riptides. this the back or the front? I think, well, I guess that if that's the street, but that's oceanfront. Inside, outside, front, back, I have no idea. Ooh. This place has everything. Everything, including that awesome view back there. Can you guys see that view? Not a green screen, not a CGI. It's a windscreen. Yes. That's real life behind us is what he's trying to say. Pretty that's, cool. That's the sky wheel. Uh, it is, uh, it's the off season season and it's still uh, beautiful weather out here uh in beautiful myrtle beach it is what november we're filming uh for this november episode november uh, 10th last time that we recorded last episode we were just getting into the playoffs since then a lot has happened cardinals lost the cardinals lost which <laughs> you want you needed to happen <laughs> you said you wanted to happen um, you said you also wanted good storylines, and there may not have been a better storyline than a couple of former birds, more than a couple, but some really uh, important figures in our franchise history that are now World Series champions. The Atlanta Braves won the World Series, uh, including uh, our good friend, uh, friend of the organization and first manager in Pelicans history, Ryan Snicker. I asked for great baseball, and we definitely got great baseball. And, you know, as it wore on, I think we all turned into Braves fans back at the beach and so happy to see the success for so many of the players and obviously Snit himself uh, being the first manager. That was our giveaway item this was two years ago? Two years ago after he won uh, NL Manager of the Year. Manager of the Year. When Adam gave these out. Old school jersey. It was really cool to see after the game his wife being interviewed talking about their times in Myrtle Beach and still looking back fondly upon you know kind of the I, that wasn't his start with the Braves, but it definitely, I think, was a turning point, opening up a franchise, being the first manager, winning the first two league championships, having a guy go from his team in high A in the first season to being the rookie of the year the, the following year. Who was who that again? Rafael for call. Rafael for call on that first roster. Um, and then a lot of also former Pelicans on those early rosters as well coming through and having success. Absolutely. Well, we got what Charlie Morton. I and I honestly had forgotten that he had worn the Birds jersey in the past. Yeah, he uh, he made a couple of a uh, couple of stints with the Birds. I think it was a two two year stint with the Birds if if we'll fact check this and make sure that it's right. But uh, was uh, was both at a, a starter and came out of the bullpen and then ended up and he's been a journeyman in in Major League Baseball and uh, has had success. But it was awesome to see him not only help get the Braves to the World Series but then start Game One. Then he goes and breaks his leg after getting hit by a line drive and still strikes out some guys. I mean, just an absolute gamer of it's, a uh, starting pitcher. In the I, f I forget which one of his teammates mentioned it too. Um, that said, he probably wanted to come out and knew that he was hurt more than he let on. But if he had come out during the mid inning, it wouldn't have given the, his replacement enough time to get warm and ready. So him going back out there and courting three additional outs gave the bullpen enough time to get up and get ready and, and come in and really get the World Series start off on a great note for the Braves winning game one on the road. Like knowing that you're coming back at least tied, that that was definitely an energizing moment for for the team and I'm sure Atlanta as a city. That's a great club. You know, one name we haven't mentioned yet is, is Freddie Freeman. Yep. And, you know, former MVP, I think, you know, probably odds-on favorite to be the World Series MVP. Uh, obviously, he wasn't. An another one of our former birds was. But even even with him not being, quote-unquote, the MVP, I definitely think he he's a leader for that team and leader for that organization just to stay focused and, and to stay loose. He... Ever since he's been in Myrtle Beach, he's never one of those, you know, rah-rah loud guys, you know, would always kind of settle the, you know, 
his emotions, and you could see that team was just having fun out there. Uh, yeah, we mentioned the former Pelican. So we got Brian Snicker, very first manager in uh, Pelican history. A couple of championships delivered to Myrtle Beach. Um, he wins a ring. He's also been with the Braves organization forever. His in, basically his entire career uh, in the, at the coaching capacity. He he had the same uh, thing happen to him as Buddy Bailey, where you know went to spring training one year and somebody said. Instead of playing, we think you should be a coach. And I think Snick got his first managerial job when he was 27. And Hank Aaron was the one who was the farm director at the time and put him in wherever their rookie ball was. I don't know if it was Danville at the time or wherever, but you know, 27 to however old he is now, it's what a great road and great story for all the other minor league managers that say, I don't know if I'll ever get a chance. You know, Time can come. You mentioned Jorge Soler. He wins the uh, World Series MVP. A- absolute tank of a home run uh, that went out of the stadium uh, in that in that game. Um, just an absolute bomb. I mean, cement mixer slider or change up or some breaking ball just hung in the wrong part of the in the zone. Swings, drives, gone. Um, Jorge Soler was with us on a rehab assignment with the Chicago Cubs, and then we also have Luke Jackson. So he got a ring with us, right? He, yeah, he did. He would have. He would have won uh, in that 2015 championship, um, the 2015 Mills Cup championship. He would have been on that team. And then um, Luke Jackson, who was with us as a member of the Texas Rangers. So not only do we have all these players uh, that come through the system, but we've had every single affiliate years uh, represented. The Braves, the Rangers, and the Cubs, which is really cool when you think about the history of this organization as well as the history of baseball in the Grand Strand to see those guys come through, have that success, and uh, have people recognize that when you come to a Pelicans game, you're going to see future stars, and it's easy to root for those guys when they're up at the big biggest level like the World Series. We've got some events going on at the ballpark. We get this question a lot, what do you guys do in the offseason? Well, we do have stuff to do in the month of December. Yeah, I got the text yesterday from a good buddy of mine who I've known here for many years, and he's like, are you guys shut down for the season now? I'm like, how do you not know what I do yet? Like, <laughs> I'm like, we're, this is actually the busier time for, for a lot of people in the office than, than when we actually have games. Uh, not everybody. You know, we've talked about that in the past about how, you know, it's cyclical, but it's, but department-wise that things change. I, I would say, you know, half the staff is busier now than they were in August. Maybe not spending as much time in the office because we don't have games to manage, but the nine to five aspect of it is definitely picking back up. I'm laying the foundation for uh, the 2022 season. It um, takes a while to get stuff here. It, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> if you you have to plan ahead in advance. <laughs> yeah, the supply chain is hitting us as well. <laughs> so, yeah, we're. I feel like we're we're in a good spot. You know, we're in our budget process for next year. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that. You know, everything uh, stops until we get a budget finalized. But, you know, that that is kind of the, the turning of the clocks to 2022 for us. We are introducing a new one. Uh, you know, well, it's not the first annual. It's the inaugural uh, first annual. That's a pet peeve of mine. There's no such thing as a first annual. It only becomes an annual when you do it a second time in a row consecutively on an annualized basis. So we will have our inaugural christmas extravaganza at the ballpark we'll have videos on the video board we'll have some arts and crafts probably some cookie stations have it on good word that the man from the north pole will be making a visit and his missus is rumored to be coming along as well oh my goodness gracious Big, big fan of the beach actually got a note from the man himself my uh my boys uh sent santa their pacifiers so he could deliver those to uh, younger babies around the world. And Santa said that uh, he was going to reward him with a nice present this year. So That's very nice of them. And he said he was looking forward to seeing him at the ballpark on the 11th, is it? Or is it the 10th? It's the 10th or the 11th? The 10th. We're getting the told tenth. the 10th. The 10th. Yeah. The 10th. Because we have a pizza party on the 11th. We do. The ballpark uh, is getting a, s- a lot of use this off season. Yeah, so we have the Christmas event. Uh, the highlight of it is the fireworks that will we'll cap off the night. Typically, when you come out to the ballpark, you have to sit in our stands to watch fireworks. We've got a new location to shoot from that will allow people to sit on our outfield lawn That's and awesome. watch fireworks from the field. That's so awesome. We'll see how, how it goes off, but uh, we went on sale about a week ago. Yep. 
Uh, sales have outpaced our expectations so far, so I don't know when this is going to drop, but uh, get them get them while you can. It's a GA event. Uh, it could potentially sell out, uh, but we want to be able to have as many people come out to the ballpark as possible. We'll turn around the next day and potentially have the world's largest pizza party. The Guinness record is a number that I can't recall, but I recall it being a number that's like, eh, I think we're going to beat that. Um, can we can we look we'll, that up? We'll, we'll throw that in. So, local legend, living legend, Ed Pietrowski uh, from WPDE, chief meteorologist, put out a tweet this spring, and he may have done it in the past, too, uh, saying he was sick of having to cover hurricanes, and people in the community were sick of having to prepare for hurricanes and get all your supplies and get ready and potentially have to evacuate and deal with flooding and all the other BS that comes with it. And he said, if we don't have to deal with any of that BS this year, I'm going to throw a pizza party for the entire community. And boy, did people hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him say that, and I was like, I bet you at some point in time, Ed's going to call us and say, guys, you want to host a pizza party? And sure enough, he we did. <laughs> and we are. And we'll, we're actually having a follow-up meeting this afternoon to, to uh, plan some more of the logistics aspects of that. But free event. You'll have the opportunity to get a slice of pizza from I hear there's a good amount of uh, local yeah, pizza I think joints there's somewhere between 16 to 18 right now confirmed that that number could go up and it's going to be all over the place uh, it's at, at the ballpark and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun uh, I also heard Jim Cantori is coming down uh, yeah, to make good an friend appearance. Jimmy C Jimmy C yeah. um, he's coming down uh, typically when uh, Cantori comes to town Nobody likes it. He's kind of. It doesn't like, mean that there's good weather in your area. No, it's not. It's not a. It's not a good indicator. But for him to come in uh, for this event, it's definitely going to add to the to luster. So Ed is uh, always a very humble guy, and you know doesn't want to be the spotlight. But we've informed him that people want to come out and see him and shake his hand and get his autograph, take pictures with him, and Cantori will be there as well. So come on out, bring the whole family. It'll be a fun time. So that's everything to look forward to next month uh, at Pelicans Ballpark in December. Uh, we've got the Christmas fireworks on the 10th, the pizza party on the 11th. Guinness, um, Guinness record is 1,146 people for a pizza party. Okay. We're going to smash it. I, I, can, <laughs> I can tell you already. There's going to be more than 1,200 people at the ballpark eating pizza. We're going uh, to have to get our gloves ready, folks, because I think the, uh, we're going to be serving some slices for some folks so why don't we get into those questions now and uh we have some good ones this time uh a reminder i did not look this time. you didn't look i know i did not look we have some good questions this time if a reminder if we didn't get to yours and you want to put one in we still have december's episode that we still have to film hit us up facebook twitter even instagram um and we'll get those questions and and ryan moore here will answer them the best that he is able Drop us a question, and that is your entry into a Christmas prize pack courtesy of Hunter and myself. Oh, we are we providing the prize? We're going to talk to Dan Bailey. Oh, but we'll yeah. figure it yeah, out. We'll, we'll, we'll choose <laughs> oh, okay. what we're giving. <laughs> I was like, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. You can have something like an old maybe, book that I have. Maybe. I don't know. We can, I don't we can, have I think <laughs> Maybe we can find one of your uh, palm tree shirts. Okay. I think we have a couple left. Mail that out. Okay. Uh, maybe a couple other little fun things. Maybe we'll give out. This is called a callback. I don't cut that. Edit, edit that. <laughs> edit, edit, edit that properly, <laughs> nurse. Maybe we'll give out a, uh, a Brian Snicker jersey. We have a few of these left. We may even have a Freddie Freeman bobblehead, a Brian McCann bobblehead. I don't know what we have. Um, but we'll give out something. All right. Drop us a question. The more questions we have, the longer we can stay here and have our delicious cocktails. By the way, how is yours? Mine's great. This I've had this one drink. before. This is the rum drunk punch uh, for those that have been uh, watching from the get-go. Hi, Mom. Um, Does your Dad. mom watch every episode? I hope not. Um, probably, though. Uh, that is that one, Hi, viewer, folks. that one unique viewer <laughs> that has followed us through uh, whatever number of episodes that we have. Um, all right. Uh, by the way, everything under the sun. Oh, Once yeah. I was again, finishing. I've had like four of these now for the last four episodes. I passed that one off to Hunter this time. I, this is the fruit one. This is the one that has some nutrients in it. Yeah, this has just without, straight without sugar. Without getting into specifics, I, I lost out on my opportunity to have lunch before this today. and <laughs> Here we are. So this is, this is a little fruit in a cup. All righty. Let's get into these questions. Uh, Rich on Facebook wants to know, 
why don't you have a couple of games on national TV or on the website, Facebook, or YouTube pages? It all goes back to rights, you know, media rights and who, who can who can show games. I, I think you're going to see a proliferation of media rights expand upon minor league baseball. You know, in the past, it's the, the majority of your televised minor league games are through the MILB TV app, uh, which is a subscription-based model. Which, which does fairly well, uh, more so than what, what you would probably expect in terms of total viewership and unique viewers. We have, uh, then you also have some of your local partnerships with uh, your TV stations, and we, we've had that with the Sinclair Network for the past three or four years where we've uh, had all of our weekend games and then po- you know Sunday games, Saturday games. We've, we've done that in the past. Uh, this past year was probably our biggest year in terms of reach in our game broadcast video wise through the marquee network i believe they picked up four six something like that games and put that out to uh their their coverage area which is quite large and covers a lot of you know cubs you know territory as time moves on and our new governance structure if you will with major league baseball i think those opportunities will continue to grow will will there be a streaming service that finds value in and showing these games yeah i think so uh, is that youtube is that uh netflix is that is there something out there that we don't even know of yet that that could be there but i i i think in five years you, you'll you will probably be able to see most if not all minor league games in some form or fashion probably in a streaming basis but i I don't have any inside knowledge other than just kind of looking at the landscape, looking at what other sport properties are doing and, and growing. Um, shameless plug for uh, our, our old Huskies. You know, last night with uh, Fox Sports 1, they had the kind of the red zone coverage of the Big East tip-off night. And you could str- stream every game in its entirety or you could watch the broadcast channel and it was kind of a whip-around action. Could that happen in a minor league setting? Potentially, would that focus on triple a or higher levels potentially but you know you look back a couple years ago and the the most desired guy to watch in all of minor league baseball was playing in a ball tim tebow so it's not always about the highest level of competition within minor league baseball but there's there's the high recognition of uh, certain players matchups games so yeah i think that there'll there'll be something it'd be it'd be foolish for us not to try to grow our product outside the ballpark as much as we can all right moving right along from j rig on twitter does the minor league strategy and coaching reflect solely on the major league baseball level game plan so is what's happening at the big league level trickle down and is that why certain things happen at the minor league level Yes and no. It's also not really where our area of expertise is. It's not, but you also speak to Buddy Bailey enough, and you've been around the game enough to kind of understand what the big club is trying to accomplish. So at the big league club, obviously the core goal is to win baseball games, score more runs than the opponent on a nightly basis, right? At the minor league level, the core goal is development of your players. Development of your players includes learning how to win. It's not just learning how to be successful as an individual, right? So while you're you're never going to put somebody in a position of failure or put them in a position to, to, to be hurt or, you know, ruin their development, let's say, at the big league level or at the minor league level, there definitely is more of a focus to get that win at the big league level than there is at the minor league level. That being said, I don't know of any team in baseball of any level in any season, and I've asked this question, if someone knows it, to please let us know because we're going to hold on to it and say that we are the only team to have done it, is to have two walk-off bunts for wins. Does that bunt help with the player's development in terms of OPS and slugging percentage and all these other metrics that are being utilized now? No. But does it get a guy learning how to execute a play in a high-profile moment, uh, 
where he's got to perform? I think it does. And so I think you look at like a guy like Buddy Bailey, and, and there's a mixture of I've got to teach my guys how to win, but I've also got to make sure that they're developing not at the detriment of a, a win or loss. It's a great balancing act, and I think uh, you mentioned Buddy Bailey and some of these other guys that have done it. Buddy Bailey's one of those guys, been around for a long time, does it very well. All right, moving right along. Justin from Instagram. Any idea on when the 22 roster might come out? Three days before the season starts. <laughs> Next question. I can, I can tell you why. He's, he's, <laughs> not, he's, he's not kidding. We usually get that roster literally 72 hours before they, uh, they show up into Myrtle Beach. And that 72-hour roster will have changes before they land in Myrtle Beach, without a doubt. It, it's a constant, you know, do you know 90% of what your roster will be? And when I say you, I mean the Cubs. They, they have a good idea of, you know, the core. And there's, there's probably, you know, 10% of guys that are on the bubble between levels that can move up or down. And then a guy gets hurt. And that could make three guys have to go to a different spot. So you, it's, it's similar to the big leagues in terms of roster construction. Like, you know pretty much the guys that are going to be there but you know you have those fringe guys that are you know 3a 4a guys big league guys that you know whoever has the hottest hand in arizona come the end of march is probably going to get that nod and that that's going to have a trickle down effect on who goes to iowa who goes to tennessee who goes to south bend and ultimately then who is here in myrtle beach peter wants to know uh how often do you talk to the executives from the cubs depends on what your definition of executives is <laughs> <laughs> you don't have Jed Hoyer's uh, cell phone number on speed dial there. No, <laughs> Jed, Jed and I are not on a daily communication plan. Though, that being said, they are accessible. If if there was a need for me to talk to Jed, that, that, that would happen. Uh, I, I deal mostly with Matt Dory and Bobby Basham. Uh, and... In season, the frequency is higher, but there's still a decent amount of communication in the off season because, as you know, we're planning for our business aspects of the ballpark operations. They're planning for the player development aspects of the ballpark operations, and those go hand in hand. So, you know, we are we are talking and working on a few things right now, and as we get closer to the winter meetings, we'll we'll probably have some more topics of conversation and. Before you know it, spring training will be kicking off, and the guys will be coming back to Myrtle Beach. And then we'll get right back at it, and we'll be back here doing the same thing that we've done year in, year out. November 11th is tomorrow. This is going to come out after that. And um, our ballpark, we try to show our appreciation day in, day out for our active duty and retired military personnel and our country wouldn't be what it is without them and you know on behalf of myself on hunter and the entire pelicans organization thank you to everyone who has fought or served our country and we appreciate you and can't wait to see you out at the ballpark next year and while tomorrow the highlight of the day is veterans day I'd be remiss not to wish a very happy birthday to our very own Sammy Parnell. Can you see it? Is that is? Can you pick that up? You can't. The slingshot. Somebody. I didn't know what it was. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Holy cow! I, of that no, never. You know that reminds me of. It reminds me of what the viral video just a few months ago, um, where it's it's the slingshot ride. Two folks go up, and a bird. Have you seen that? A bird. Fly a seagull. Sammy, can you pull it up so we can do a flies, live react? Do you know? Flies into one of the riders. No. Like right into her face. That is like you couldn't put. And it just sits there because the 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 slingshot's going up, so I'm the not, gravity I'm, is I'm, forcing I'm not, that bird. I am nauseous. And for for our for our viewers that don't know this, Ryan doesn't particularly like birds, like at all. I hate birds and I don't like heights. It, it's incredible. It's incredible. But we have one of those. We have a slingshot here in Myrtle Beach. And it's right next to Riptides. Let's pull this up here, because I want him to see this. And that's what we'll close this show with. We'll close this episode with this. Is this from here? I don't believe so. I think it's, okay. just, it's just a slingshot. But we have one here in Myrtle Beach. Now watch the, the young woman on the right-hand side. Oh! Oh! No, 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 no. 
No, I'm gonna watch that. Again. Oh, they're doing it slow mo. Oh my god, it hugged her neck. I still she don't. had the wherewithal to grab it and pull it off of her. I would have tried to unbuckle the seat, just jump. That would have been it. That that would have been the end of it for me. Oh my god. Oh, I, I can't even imagine. Oh, they're bleeping out the girl's mouth. No one's looking at her. <laughs> this is the big big seagull, full grown seagull, which are like small dogs when they get gr- full grown. Like they're big. In any case. We're at Riptide's Oceanfront Grill and Bar right down the street. You can see it behind us. Maybe maybe our, our production team will get a shot of it. But they have a, we have a slingshot here. Beautiful day. We've had great drinks. Um, this is the show where we bring your questions. Both hands are going to be, like, she very calmly just takes it with one hand and it's like, okay, bye. Like, the I don't know if you pick up the screaming, but it's not even the bird girl that's screaming. It's, it's her friend. Uh, I can't look away. It's the train wreck. This is a show where we bring your questions directly to uh, Pelican's team president and general manager, Ryan Moore. He does not like birds. He's watching this video, and it's going to probably traumatize him for the rest of the day. Um, uh, we want to thank Riptides again. This is this is a, another episode of our off-season season. If you have questions, hit us the up. The bird made it. The bird's alive. The bird oh, I don't away. think it died. No, I, well, I thought the impact might have killed it. Like, a, like, that has to be the velocity of a car, right? But I guess her throat isn't as damaging as the hood of a car wow shout out to riptides if you're in the area we have great weather all year long it is t-shirt weather it's blue skies sunny come on down to riptides uh, get yourself a great drink we have these in these mega mugs uh, we also sell uh these sizes at the ballpark they'll be back uh during the 2022 season um thank you so much uh do we do we want to do we want to give another behind the scenes yeah sure why not ryan canella come on up you're getting additional content now. If you've stayed till the end of this video, this is you, yeah, you're if getting you made extra it to stuff. this point. You, you're gonna get the the first first acknowledgement of a new area in the ballpark next year. Let, let me give the mic over to uh, Ryan Canella, Assistant General Manager of Sales. Canella, tell us what what people coming to the ballpark next year will see at the Pelicans Perch or the area formerly known as Pelicans Perch. Yeah. So if you have or have not been to the ballpark. The Pelicans Perch is down the left field line on third, up above the Pelicans Beach. Uh, overlooking the Pelicans Beach area, we've got a giant bar there where you can get all kinds of different beverages at the ballpark. And the atmosphere here at Riptides is so infectious that we wanted to bring that to the stadium. So we are going to be working with Riptides to rebrand that area to be the Riptides uh, deck name to TBD. Well, that's, that's a work in progress. But um, much like this restaurant overlooks the ocean, their bar at the ballpark will also overlook the beach in the stadium. And we are super pumped to have that, uh, that atmosphere at the stadium. Awesome news. Great job by our sales team and great job about partnership development and, and growing as they come into the ballpark and seeing the opportunities to promote their brand. If you have a name, we like alliteration in minor league baseball, Wiener Wednesday, Taco Tuesdays, Thirsty Thursdays, Family Fridays, find us something for the Riptides deck. I can't. Riptides rooftop, but it's not a roof. Yep. <laughs> Thought about that from Sammy. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, if you have a if you have an idea for a name and we end up using it, okay. I will get you tickets to your next game and your first drink at the Riptides to be determined later name area. For Ryan Moore, I'm Hunter Hornstein. This has been another episode of Behind the Seams presented by Riptides Oceanfront Grill and Rooftop Bar. Happy Thanksgiving season, everybody.